welcome to worship here on this New Year's Eve night. Tonight, we will offer prayers of sending for 2020. We will offer prayers for peace and health for us all and all the world for 2021. Tonight as well, as you can see behind me, we have a sampling here of our food donation that will go to the Perry County Food Bank uh, that came from our reverse advent baskets. So for all who filled baskets as you counted down the days of advent, thank you. This is just a small portion of what is scattered here um, in the pews in front of us. So we will have a wonderful donation to take to the food bank. So thank you for that, and we will bless these gifts later in the service. I invite you to begin with the opening dialogue. The light shines in the darkness. The word became flesh and lived among us. To us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. In the word was life, and the life was the light of all people. We sing our gathering hymn together. It came upon a midnight clear. <laughs>
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have placed us in a world of space and time, and through the events of our lives, you bless us with your love. Grant that in the new year, we may know your presence, see your love at work, and live in the light of the event that gives us joy forever, the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, God has spoken to us by the Son. Our first reading tonight comes from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance, in your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They're more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Here ends the reading. Our gospel affirmation this night will be verse 1. A come thou almighty king. <laughs> Enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? 
Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you in peace, from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I come to the end. I am still with you. These are the words that the psalmist chooses to end Psalm 139. They are fitting for tonight as we come to the end of this year. With just over six hours to go, we are counting the hours and maybe even the minutes until this year of 2020 will come to a close. This year has felt like a marathon, or an unbelievable sprint, and on some days I'm not sure which. Perhaps it was both. We have come here to the end, exhausted and tired. For many of us, our celebrations will be very different this year. The things we would have done in years past are closed, we are cautioned not to gather with loved ones and friends because the rates of virus and community spread are still dangerously out of control. The ball will drop in Times Square, but without the millions of people gathered together to usher in the new year together. Just as we have watched sporting events this year, the crowds will all be virtual. We remain connected, but from a distance. These ties that hold us together as families and communities and God's people have stretched both literally and figuratively this year. 2020 has challenged us in ways that we did not expect one year ago when life was normal on December 31st, 2019. One year ago, we celebrated as we always have. We made resolutions and looked forward to upcoming plans. We dreamed of special events, personal and family milestones, and a host of other things. We had no reason to believe that the world would change in the middle of March, but it did. All of a sudden, in what seems like an instant now, we became aware that the threat from the coronavirus was real, and it was spreading, and it couldn't be ignored. Or, I should say, that even if we ignored it, the damage would rage through our country anyway. Death tolls have become daily news, for those who are willing to watch them rise. On December 20th, when we gathered here together for the longest night service, we told the church bell 32 times 
once for every 10,000 Americans who had died. That night, we had reached almost 320,000 dead. Tonight, that number has surpassed 342,000. In less than 11 days, another 22,000 people have died, and more will die tonight. There is no escaping the reality that 2020 has been a year filled with grief and loss in so many ways. We lament tonight for the millions of people who grieve for their loved ones and friends who will not be with them tonight to see in the new year. We repent for the ways in which our country has sought to minimize these deaths. How we have pretended that this pandemic does not exist, which has simply allowed it to spread. Of course, the coronavirus was not the only hardship that we had to endure this year. While we attempted to cope with the staggering effects of this out of control virus, we were forced once again to come face to face with the demons that have plagued America since our very inception. The other plague, which we have not yet eradicated, that of hatred, discrimination, bigotry, and racial violence. One after another, we watched as unarmed black men and women were killed, many by people in authority. This tension grew until the country could stand no longer as we watched George Floyd be murdered in front of our own eyes, begging for his life. Cries of a black man ignored until he died. These racial tensions undergirded the buildup to our election season, which was as divided as we expected. Half of America does not trust the other half. Democracy itself no longer seems as though it is a system that is strong enough to withstand the division that exists among us. These are heavy burdens that we bring here tonight. These are problems which make us angry enough to scream and sad enough to cry. We pray for all these things tonight to the God who is present always, who sees and knows these things about us already. Every failing and shortcoming, God knows. Every selfish desire, every quest for power, every time we turn a blind eye to the suffering of others, every time we are the cause of someone else's suffering, God knows. Our psalmist tonight reminds us with expansive and eternal words that God is present at the greatest heights, the farthest depths, across the widest seas and in the darkness of night, of which this year has been. God is here. God is the light shining brightly in this darkness, where death and oppression and fear and sadness abound. God is there. For those who die alone this year, God's Holy Spirit gathered them up close to God's self. When George Floyd was killed on the street, God was there as the shouts to let him breathe went unheeded. The psalmist asks us the rhetorical question, where can I go from your spirit? And the answer is nowhere. God is bigger than all of this. God's intentions for the world will rectify and heal all that is broken in the world. We, like Nicodemus, who went to visit Jesus in the dark of night, come here to wrestle and question all that is and all that has been. We come here tonight to lay to rest 
the year of 2020, which has been a year too filled with violence and death. We come here tonight to pray that we may find a better way in 2021. But these words of our prayers must create the actions that we take and the words that we say as we enter this new time. Nicodemus was searching for answers as part of the powerful religious establishment, the Pharisees, who were rejecting Jesus and accusing him of perverting Jewish law. It was dangerous for him to be there with Jesus. His position and privilege were at risk. And yet he came because he knew that there was something true in Jesus' teaching. Jesus tells him that in order to be part of God's kingdom, one must be born anew, born of the Spirit. What Jesus is telling him is that he must change the old ways are not working. The way people are living goes against God's plans for the kingdom. We must repent and seek redemption. We must be transformed by God's spirit. We must leave behind those things which cause harm to God's creation, to the land and to our waters, to our fellow creatures that inhabit this earth, and to one another. Jesus tells Nicodemus that he has come to bring salvation and eternal life to all. But that path is not easy. We must follow where God leads. We must listen to the teaching of Jesus. Our hearts must be filled with love and peace toward one another if there is to be love and peace in God's kingdom. Our actions must lift up the suffering and the poor and the left behind, and we must condemn any powerful and oppressive people or system which does not give life to God's people. I wish with my whole heart that I could offer you the promise that 2020's problems would be gone when we wake up tomorrow, that 2020 one will be different. But that would be a false promise. What I can promise you, though, is that there is hope. We have hope in great abundance because Jesus Christ is the light that beckons to us. We have the sure and certain promise that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. God's plans for this world will come to be. God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But change will come in order to bring that to fulfillment. Power structures which oppress God's people, economic systems which impoverish billions on this earth will cease. Peace will come. Violence, terrorism, nationalism, and military domination will have no place in God's kingdom. We are called. We are called to join Jesus, to be followers of the one who came and dwelt among us and died because he dared to tell the powerful that they must change. We are called to the way of the cross to bear witness to suffering and offer the good news that Jesus brings. We are called to be the hope and faith that is found in the power of the empty tomb. We are blessed by a God who will not leave us in despair. We are sheltered by God for all eternity. Guide us, O oh Lord, to be your people. Give us courage as we enter into this new year. Change our hearts and transform our very souls that we may be your people sent as a holy and blessed people for the sake of the world. Help us to know your heart. Move us to show your goodness to our neighbor. Teach us your will 
and guide our ways. Grant grace and mercy to us all. Amen. We sing our hymn of the day, O Christ the Savior.
Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God. You are the source of every blessing. From your hand we receive the good gifts of life, health, and salvation. Bless us with hearts thankful for the gift of your Son, and lead us to share from our abundance with those in need. Bless these gifts of food, that they may provide nourishment to any who are in need. Bless the Perry County Food Bank and their staff and volunteers as they serve our neighbors who suffer in poverty or with unemployment or underemployment. We ask all this through Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending. By paths yet untrodden, through perils unknown, Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, gathered as one with the body of Christ, let us pray. Holy and righteous God, teach us to be honest about our sinfulness. Turn our hearts back to you to receive the fullness of your forgiveness and redemption. Soothe the souls of people who feel like they are beyond your mercy. Wash away the barriers that keep us far from you and restore joy in our lives. Reveal the treasures of heaven through the witness of all your saints. Give us the will to journey faithfully and to bear Christ's salvation to all who yearn for it. In the coming new year, we pray for your wisdom and guidance for our public servants, the government, and those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Reveal your will for us as you receive our prayers. Conform our ways to your ways through the saving work of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We remember this night those from the Christ Lutheran Church community who have died in 2020, including Donald Carpenter, Bill Balsoff, Betty Kavanaugh, Dale Hayes, and Hilda Clauser. May they be at peace in your loving care, giving thanks for all those who have gone before us and are at rest, rejoicing in the communion of saints. We commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to you through Christ our Lord. Entrusting all our hopes and fears to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. 
death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. God is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. God grants you grace and peace at the dawn of this new year. All flesh is grass, but the word of God remains forever. God, who is eternal, keep you in hope of the resurrection. The past, the present, and the future rest in God's hands. God, guard your coming in and your going forth, this new year and forevermore. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing our sending hymn, O God, beyond all praising. <laughs>
hope. Go in love. Christ is here. Christ is coming. Christ is with you always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you.